Okay, guys, so we're going to have a look at the uh, assessed homework for moles calculations that you did recently. Um, this is your feedback video, so if you want to pull up your own test, probably on uh, Firefly, and uh, go through um, anything that you got incorrect uh, with what I'm doing here today. Okay, so maybe a good idea, uh, certainly to have your calculator with you, and also to... Um, have a pen, a piece of paper, of course, to do maybe a bit of calculations on the side, right? And I would also suggest that you have your class notes with you, all right? Definitely worth having those at your side so you can find some of these answers if need be. Okay, so the mass of all atoms in the, uh, are measured against the what's called the carbon 12, the carbon 12 atom, that is the answer there, and to be specifically the 12 one. And if you look in your notes, you'll find that on, I'm not quite sure, a second or third page in. Okay, what is the relative formula mass of KBR? Well, I mean, that was a really kind of give you a, a much simpler one to get you going. Okay, so potassium, of course, is 39 mass number, <coughs> excuse me, and bromine, bromine sorry, is 80. So we go 119. Okay, so the answer is B for that. A little bit more difficult with this one here, ammonium uh, phosphate. Okay, not really ammonium phosphate, but it's... It's uh, one we made up just to test you here. So we have three nitrogens, okay, which is uh, 14 times three, of course. We have four times three hydrogens. Each hydrogen is uh, 12, or one, so we have 12 of those. We have two phosphoruses, which are 30, um, 31 each. And we have oxygen. Each oxygen is 16, and we have um, eight oxygens in there, which is a total of 100. 28 for the oxygen. So if we just add that all up, we get 12 plus 14 equals, gives me 244 is your answer. <coughs> so that's your answer there. Okay. Uh, what is the MR of iron 3 sulfate? So this one, what we did was we didn't give you the formula. You had to work out it yourself. So if it's sulfate is a 2 minus ion, iron 3 is obviously a 3. So we've got to put a 2 down there and we've got to bracket that all and put it into 3. Okay, so we've got 56 times 2 plus 3 sulfurs, which are uh, 32 each, plus we've got uh, 12, 4 times 3, um, which is our, so we have a total here, do not include units in this, uh, all that adds up, sorry, to um, 400, I'll double check it just to make sure, I'm just doing it on my calculator here. Okay, so 32 times 3 plus 16 times 12, yeah, 400. Right, this time then we moved into the next stage of the booklet. What was the percentage uh, composition this time is what we were after, and we asked for two significant figures. Okay, so what is the percentage of aluminium? So if you remember your formula for percentage, it is the number of atoms, okay, which were after aluminium. So we have two, um, I'll just clear that so we can see uh, in this instance here we have two atoms of aluminium in here okay you can see it okay multiplied by the atomic mass of the aluminium which is 27 over the mass of the whole thing which is 54 that's the 227s for the aluminium plus we have three carbons in there okay which is 312s which are 36 and then we've got our nine Nine, excuse me, nine oxygens. Okay, so we've got 144. Okay, um, so we've got 54 divided by that gives us 23. So that calculation out, uh, we turned into percentage by times and by 100, will give us 23%. And we're asked to write it to two sig fig, so 23% is the right answer. This time we're after the percentage of oxygen, and the only difference here is that we have the oxygen in brackets in gallium hydroxide. So gallium has an RFM of 70. We have it with three hydroxides. Each hydroxide is a 17, 17 each, so that's you've got 51 on your bottom line. Okay, oxygen is 16, and you've got three, uh, three 16s there, which gives you 48 on your top line. So you have 70 plus 51 on your bottom line, and you've got 48 divided by that gives you, and we're asked to three significant figures again, comes out at 39.66. So, okay, so three significant figures, we've got to put that up to 40. Okay, right, this time calculate the number of moles in the following, and again, we're writing our answers to two significant figures with no units. So we just remember our little moles formula, very simple, okay, uh, moles equals mass over 
the RFM or the relative formula mass of that thing. So we have phosphoric acid, which is three hydrogens, okay, which is a total of 98. So that's a very simple one of 9.8 over 98, which is 0 0.1, okay. Um, write the following to, oh, sorry, I forgot, forgot one. So aluminium is, two aluminiums is 54 plus 32 times 3 plus the 16 times the 12 gives us an RFM there of 300 and, uh, 342 is our bottom line for that one. And we have 68.4 divided by that times 100. Okay, well that gives us a nice 20%. Very simple. Okay, I write the following answer to 3 sig fig. Okay, the reason why I've asked for that is because we have a massive value here. We've got tons this time is the only difference here. Now, if you remember tons to grams is times by 1 times 10 to the 6 or times by a million. Okay, so we've got <coughs> an RFM on the bottom here of calcium sulfate is 120. So in other words, you're dividing that by 120. Okay, so 65. By that, right? Okay, it gives us, and we're working this to six um, sig fig, so that is five, five, eight, three, three, three. Okay, it's not too bad, really. All right, so that's good. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. So, Okay, so this time we're calculating the mass in grams. So really it's just a manipulation. Now this time we're making the subject R of our uh, equation a, a different subject. So we're making mass the subject of our equation. Okay, so um, dead easy. All we do there is that mass equals number of moles times the MR this time. And we're working to five sig fig here. Okay, so let's go back, right. So we had 0.33 moles, so in other words 0.33 times potassium chloride. Potassium chloride, the RFM is 39 for the potassium and 35.55. Okay, so we had 0.33 multiplied by 39 plus 35.5. Okay, it gives us, uh, we're working to 5 sig fig, it comes out just at 5 sig fig anyway, so that makes it really pretty simple. Okay, 24.585. Okay, right, this time we're calculating the mass, but it has to be in kilograms, okay, so that was important that you took that into account, and we had a right to 5 sig fig again with no units. So this time what we did, we didn't give you the formula, so barium is plus 2, hydroxide is minus 1, so barium hydroxide is BaOH2, so the RFM of that is 137 for the barium, plus the two hydroxides are 34, so 137 plus 34 gives 137. 71, okay, 171, and that's multiplied by 12.8, okay, gives us um, 2188.8 grams, but we've got, we've been asked to put it into kilograms, yeah, so that gives me 2 point, so I'll just write it here, 2.1888. Okay, it comes out at five sig fig, and we have no rounding up or rounding down to do there. It's fine. Okay, convert the following mass units. <coughs> okay, so we're just going from uh, kilograms here into grams. So we're multiplying by a thousand. Okay, so I would like to think that should be pretty straightforward for you. And um, we've got tons then, so we're two one fives here. We're just multiplying by a million to go uh, tons into grams. And um, we're kilograms into grams, and again, kilograms um, into um, grams. Sorry, it's just multiplied by 1000 again. So you can plug it into your calculator or just take away, um, just take away your, th your uh, three zeros if you want to go like so, and that will convert it. I'll multiply it by 1000. Uh, it's up to you. Okay, this time we'll use a bit of standard form, so 2, 7, 5, okay, would be the kilograms there, and then we had to convert that into grams, so by doing that we just multiply them by a thousand, so that's all you had to do, okay, um, I suppose you could have written 2.75 actually multiplied by 10 
to the eight would be the same as multiplying by th by uh, by a thousand. Although it does say up here, nor write your answers in standard form. So actually, that answer there would not have got you credit. Which one of the following represents the numbers of atoms in a mole? Okay, there's a bit on your notes about Avogadro's number. Alternatively, you could have went to Google and that would have told you how many atoms there were in one mole of anything. Very simple. Okay, question 12. Which one of the following? Um, I use this equation with nasty little equation just with ratios in it, guys. That's why we put that in here to really test you. How many moles of uh, moles? of moles? Uh, that's obviously duplicated by mistake. How many moles of sodium chloride are formed from 0.33 moles of sodium phosphate? So first thing you've got to do is locate your sodium phosphate, which is that. And it asks you how many moles of sodium chloride. Well, there's your moles of sodium chloride there. Very simply, the ratio here is 2 to 6 or 1 to 3. So all you're doing is multiplying that up by a factor of 3, which would have given you 0 0.99. Very simple. That's a nice simple one, actually, to get you going in this equation. How many moles of magnesium phosphate form from 15.3 moles of magnesium chloride? So there's our magnesium chloride, and we had 15.3 of that, and we're looking for magnesium phosphate. So this time our ratio is 3 back to 1, so we've got to take that 15.3 and divide it by 3 to make that ratio right. Okay, so that gives me 15.3 divided by 3 is, of course, 5.1. How many moles of sodium phosphate are needed <coughs> to make? I'll just clear this off here, guys, to tidy that up a bit. Okay, so this time we are, how many moles of sodium phosphate are, uh, yeah, sodium phosphate, so that's this. I would like to put a little question mark beside them are needed to form 0.25 of magnesium. So we've got 0.25 of magnesium phosphate. Uh, so the ratio is 2. Uh, is one we're going back the ways this time so it's one up to two so we had to take our 0.25 and multiply it by two this time which gave me a 0 0.50 moles <coughs> what mass so now we're into using the the formula the mass formula this time okay so let's have a look what mass of magnesium phosphate okay so just clear that again Okay, so this time, what mass of magnesium phosphate? So again, I put a little question mark below the one that questions about. Um, is formed from an excess of so our excess of magnesium chloride. So we can ignore the magnesium chloride. And two five zero point three eight grams of the sodium phosphate. So and again, we have to write to three significant figures with no units. On it. Okay, so just remind ourselves: number of moles equals mass over mR. Okay, so let's get the MR of sodium phosphate, which is 3 sodiums, which is 23 times 3, uh, 1 phosphorus and 4 uh, oxygen, sorry, which is 164. So we need to get the mold of that. So 250.38 is the mass divided by the RFM gives me, okay, I have 1. <coughs> Point five two six seven one point five two six seven. I wouldn't clear this off my calculator, boys, if I was you. Okay, we're going two ratio back to one, so we've got to divide that by two this time. Okay, and that will give us not point seven six three three five moles. Okay, and then from there, I'm going to multiply that by the RFM because I'm after mass. Mass equals moles times RFM. So I need to multiply that by the RFM of the, the magnesium phosphate, okay, which is uh, eight oxygens. Okay, so I've asked this to be in three significant figures, and that actually comes out. I've clearly done that on purpose as 200. Okay, sorry, without units. Okay, right. So that's why I use those slightly awkward looking numbers there, is order to make that come out nicely at, for you at uh, 200 grams, guys. Okay, let's have a look at next one. Okay, so what is the minimum mass of magnesium chloride required to form two and a half kilograms of sodium chloride? 
Okay, so we've got to get two and a half kilograms of that. So I would just put that into grams to make it a bit easier. So the the mold of this is um, mass over the RFM. So it's two five zero zero divided by the fifty eight point five, which is the sodium plus the chlorine. So we're on at the minute forty two point seven three five is the mold of that. <laughs> okay. Question asks us what is the minimum mass of magnesium chloride? Okay, that is required. So we have to assume if we're after magnesium that the that that's in excess and it's not relevant. Okay, the ratio of that back to that is uh, two back to one, six back to three. So our mold of that will have to be divided by two. I just keep this stuff in my calculator, boys. I'd advise you to do the same. Gives me twenty one point three six seven. Multiply that by the RFM of the magnesium chloride. Okay. Um, pen's run out of ink. Okay. Um, sorry. By the RFM of the magnesium chloride, which is 24 for the magnesium, and two chlorines is 71, and that gives me. And we're working here to um, four significant figures. So that gives my answer here is. Uh, Two zero two nine point nine one. Remember that's grams. Okay, so I would uh, give this. So we're working to four significant figures. Okay, so that's two zero three zero. Okay, if we work out the two significant figures, or sorry, four significant figures. And remember, don't put your units in. Okay, that is called an evaporating basin. Okay, that's its, its name. It's an evaporating basin, not an evaporating dish. Okay, right. Let's have a look at the next one. The following question um, concerns limiting reactants. So again, we're into limiting reactants, which I've managed to spell wrong. But anyway, <laughs> I'm sure you worked out what it meant. So how many moles of carbon dioxide are made from 12 moles? So let's just label what we've got here: 12 moles of iron oxide. So 12 of that, and 14 moles of carbon. And the question is how many moles of carbon or uh, carbon dioxide are made sorry okay so if i have uh, 12 moles of this the ratio here is two up to three so i will need 12 divided by two multiplied by three which is of course 18. I shouldn't have needed to do my calculator by now so i will need 18 moles of that to react with 12 moles. Now I've only 12 moles of iron oxide. I've only got 14 of that. So there you go. That's my limiting reactant. That's the one that controls how much carbon dioxide I can make. Now the carbon dioxide, the carbon to carbon dioxide is one to one ratio. So if I have 14 moles of carbon and that's my limiting reactant, I can only make 14 moles of carbon dioxide. Okay. Let's just clear that. Right, so this time I have 0.6 moles of carbon. All right, so let's just label it. 0.6 moles of carbon reacts with 0.35 moles of iron oxide. How many moles of iron will form? Okay, so we need to do our uh, find out which ones are limiting reactant as well. Or sorry, again, sorry. So we take our 0.35, divide it by two, and multiply it up by three. So this time I would need of my carbon 0.525. I've got 0.6, so this carbon is in excess again, or this time, sorry. Um, and my question is how many moles of iron? So the iron to iron oxide, you'll see the ratio is 2 up to 4, so it's 1 up to 2. So it's, you're multiplying that by 2, so your answer is 0.70. <laughs> <clears throat> what mass? So this time we've got to bring it through to mass. We're not just asked for moles like we were in the first parts of the question. Okay. So what mass of carbon dioxide is formed when 56 grams of iron oxide? So again, this is going to be a more ca complicated one, and you can see it's worth. Uh, in fact, um, no, it's only worth one more. Probably should have made it worth two. But I don't know. Okay. So 56 um, grams of iron was reacted with seven grams of so this time we're going to get the moles of these things. Okay. 
before we can go actually go any further. So the mould of this, sorry, that's over 160. Mould of that are 0.35. Mould of this, R7 divided by R12, is 0.583. So again, we need to work out which one is in excess. Okay. So if I have that number of moles of that, I would need 0.3889 moles of this to react with it. I've only got 0.35, so that is my limiting reactant here. This time I've got to work out uh, what mass of carbon dioxide would be made. There's my limiting number of moles. Okay, to carbon dioxide from iron oxide is 2 up to 3, so I need to multiply this by 3 over 2. Okay, so I take my 0.35 divided by 2 times 3. It tells me that the moles of carbon dioxide that I would get there is 0.525. The mass is, of course, moles times the RFM. When the RFM of carbon dioxide is 44, we're working to three significant figures. It comes out at exactly three significant figures. Okay, and the answer is uh, 23.1. No units again. You put units on, the computer will mark it wrong, I'm afraid. Okay. So these are all getting a bit trickier okay, towards the end here, definitely. What mass of carbon is required to react with 30 grams of iron oxide? So let's take our 30 grams of that again. Our RFM, we already worked it out, was 160. Um, <coughs> and we had to form 16.8 grams of iron. Okay, so 16.8 grams of iron. Right, so let's have a look at this. 30 grams of iron oxide, so let's get our moles. 30 grams of iron oxide. Um, divided by our 160 tells me that I have got 0.1875 of that. Um, our iron is 56, so let's just do that. 16.8 divided by 56 gives me 0.3. Now, this is a two up, one up to two ratio here. Okay, so that tells me if I had 0.1875, okay, of my iron oxide. That would give me 0.375 moles of my pure iron, but I've only got 0.3 moles, which means my carbon must be a limiting reactant in here. So I take my 0.3 and I divide it by 4 and multiply it by 3 because I'm a 4 back to 3 ratio here. So 0.3 divided by 4 multiplied by 3. Okay. That tells me that I, to get that amount of iron, I had to start off with 0.225 moles of carbon. Now, the mass is the question. It asks you to 2SF. It comes out nicely at exactly 2SF. So that multiplied by 12 gives me 2.7 grams. Don't put any units on it. That is a hard question. So that's the last question in the uh, limiting reactant, of course. That was a hard one. Anybody got that right? Very well done, because that was a... That was a really, really tricky one. Must have been in a bad mood when I wrote that. Okay, which of the following questions, uh, sorry, the following question about percentage yield, what is the missing term? So percentage yield equals something divided by theoretical yield. Well, the something is, because uh, the theoretical yield is quoted in grams here, the something must be actual yield in grams. It has to be in grams. I know I've said actual yield here, but specifically this would mean it has to be in grams. Okay, calculate the percentage of the following. In the manufacture of aluminium metal, a student expected to make 25 grams, but they only made five. Well, that's easy. It's just simply this, this up here, five divided by 25, multiplied by 100. Well, that's a fifth of that, isn't it? So, sorry, so it's 20%. Again, no units, okay? <laughs> calculate the percentage yield if 28 grams of iron reacts with water Okay, to form this amount of iron oxide right now. This was one we really had to be on the ball. Okay, we have iron. We didn't need the equation. The iron is going to iron, tet, what we call iron 3 tetroxide. So I'll write this over here. Iron is going to iron tetroxide. Okay, now in order for that to happen, I'm going to have to start with three irons there doesn't matter about the water, I need three irons to make one mole of that iron tetroxide. If you didn't cotton on to that, you really simply just were not going to be able to do this question. If you did cotton on to that, very well done. 
Okay, so that's a one, sorry, it's not it's a three, two, one <laughs> ratio. So we've got 28 grams of iron. Okay. Um, let's do 28 divided by our 56 is, of course, a half a mole of iron to start off with. So we'll just do 0 0.5 moles of that down there. That should give us, okay, a third of that because it's a three, three back to one ratio. So that'll give us 0 0.167 moles of this uh, iron tetroxide. Okay. Um, now, we will multiply that by the RFM of the iron tetroxide. Okay. And that will give us the mass of iron tetroxide that should be made. Okay. And that means we should, in theory, make that. So that's our theoretical yield from up here. Our actual yield is, of course, it tells us in the question, 20 grams. Okay, and we are asked to write this to, well, no, we've got a multiple choice here. Comes out of 51.7 percentage yield. Okay, so tricky question, yeah. Um, you have Mr. Smith to thank for the fact that iron 3 tetroxide was put in there as a formula. I wasn't going to put it in. I was going to make you search the internet and find it. Okay, wouldn't have been hard to do. Right, so uh, the lid remains on. This is uh, an apparatus to calculate the empirical formula. The lid remains on the apparatus for what reason? To prevent water? No, that would be for hydration. So that was a wee, good, good wee dummy answer. To prevent gases getting in? No, actually you want gases to get in. Okay, so that's no good. Prevent solid magnesium or product escaping? Yeah, that's the reason why. Okay, and I did speak about that in the Zoom lesson. That was the exact reason. Why is the apparatus heated to constant mass to ensure the reaction is finished? Probably, that's a decent answer, but maybe not the best answer. To ensure all water has been removed? No, that's a dummy one for hydration or water crystallization calculations. To ensure the compound is fully thermally decomposed? We're not doing that here. Okay, although that would apply in a different practical. To ensure the compound has reacted fully with oxygen? That's the best uh, answer there. Okay. Okay, 18A then, we're moving into uh, some of these questions, so we're getting close to the end. Well, this is a long test or long homework, although it was set over about four weeks. So in an experiment to monitor the reaction of aluminium with oxygen carried out in the apparatus above, we got these following. Okay, right. So what do we need? We've got to get the empirical formula of the aluminium oxide. So we need to find out the mass of aluminium that was in there and the mass of oxygen that reacted with it. Well, the, the empty cru the crucible with the lid is that, and the crucible with the aluminium is that. So the amount of aluminium that's in there has got to be the first, the second one, sorry, take away the first one, which gives me 2.16 grams of that. Okay, and we divide that by 27 to get the moles of aluminium, because the moles are uh, what, what the, ratio, the ratio in the formula is. It's ratio of moles, not ratio of mass. Okay, the mass of, so the mass then after we heated it went up to that, so that must be the oxygen being added to the to the aluminium, sorry. Okay, so we have 24.6 minus or 23.66. Uh, okay, gives us 0 0.966 grams of oxygen. The mass of oxygen or the atomic mass of oxygen is 16. Gives us a nice 0 0.06. So when you get that, you know you're on the right road. Gives us a 4 to 3 ratio of aluminium to oxygen. So there you go, that's your answer. This time a compound contains 20%. I'll just clear that. Okay, a compound contains 20% of carbon. So we've got carbon in it. We've got hydrogen in it. We've got nitrogen in it. And we've got oxygen in it. So we've got 20% carbon. We've got 6.66% hydrogen. We've got 46.67% nitrogen and 26.67% oxygen. Remember, all we do is we decide what, um, if we have a percentage, we just pretend that it's out of 100 grams and that's our mass. So we can simply turn that into moles by dividing by the atomic mass. Okay, so if we just do that, so 20 divided by the 12 gives us 1.667. That's obviously 
are 46.67 divided by the 14 that gives us 3.33 so you can already see patterns arising here that that you know that's double that and you can see that that's double that okay so you can kind of start to see uh, a decent ratio appearing in front of your eyes even as you as you do this it's good to pick up on that on this one here at the end is 1.667 as well so that's the same ratio so a ratio is one to two to four to one so we're looking over here for a ratio of one carbon <laughs> to four hydrogens so let's see one carbon so that's out of it uh, yeah because that's not the simplest whole number that's just rubbish okay and we're looking one to four is fine here but we've got to go one to two for the nitrogens so there you go that rules that out so there's your answer okay let's clear the screen Okay, so compound contains 13 point, f so we've got calcium in it, we've got oxygen in it, we've got hydrogen in it. So 13.5 for that, 10.8 of that, and 0.675 of that. So that's divided by 1, that's divided by 16, and that's divided by 40 to turn this into moles. So we've 13.5 divided by 40 gives me 0.3375. We have our 10.8 divided by our 16 gives me 0.675. So immediately I can say that's, I think, looks like times 2 there, yeah. And that is, of course, 0.675. So that is a ratio of 1 to 2 to 2. So we're looking calcium 1. So we can rule out that. We can rule out that because calcium and oxygen are 1 to 1. We can rule out that. Uh, there's your answer. Now, that fits the ratio. Okay, let's have a look at this as water of crystallization. Okay, so we're getting to the very last equations that we are calculations, sorry, that we did. So we had a sample of this, 26.8, and we heated it. And when we heat it, remember all the water goes away and just leaves us with magnesium sulfate only tells us we were left with a residue of 11.4 so the residue will be that remember the water goes away as um, water vapor as steam okay so the RFM that is 120 so we have 11.4 divided by the 120 gives me 0.0 uh, sorry 0.09 not point not nine five ignore that zero there okay the difference in those two values must be the the mass of water which is the 26.8 and the 11.4 that was uh, um left behind as a residue okay so the water must have been 15.4 grams and if we divide that by 18 which is which gives me 0 0.855 moles of the water Okay, now this, so there's my modes of the water, there's my modes of my, my magnesium sulfate, sorry. So we divide the largest by the smallest, okay, and that gives me a value of 9 to 1. So it asks me here what's the value, what calculate x, so x is 9, there's 9 waters for 1 magnesium sulfate. Okay, in the experiment above, students should keep the lid on the crucible. Uh, no, simply not, because you want to get rid this time of the water from whatever your solid is. And if you keep the lid on, that traps the water. You don't want that to happen. All right, a sample of hydrated copper sulfate was heated to constant mass. What was the color change? Hydrated copper sulfate, you should know, is blue. When you heat it, you get anhydrous copper sulfate. So in other words, the water has now gone. Okay, and the, the anhydrous is white, so your color change here is blue to white. Okay, guys, that's the whole thing. Um, hopefully, uh, that was uh, decent feedback, and you can see where you went wrong, and uh, you can improve for your test and for uh, year 12.